Praise the Lord. How are you all doing this morning? You ready for the word? Amen. So am I. I'm ready to hear what the word has to say. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit, you know, he's amazing because he confirms in, um, as Erica stated, she mentioned about, you know, you can hear the voice of God or something like that you said. And uh, you'll see as I share my message, especially the title, that's what it has, that's what we're talking about this morning. Amen. So God is good. It's awesome when we have women and men of God to hear from the Holy Spirit and, and obedient because that's just the way he flows. Amen. So, Father, we thank you so much for this word that we're about to receive. It is true. We accept it. We believe it. We choose to with our heart. Even though our heads may not line up, we thank you that your word is true. So we choose to not just believe it, but to act on it. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let me get my notes up here. I'm excited about this word and... And, and as I stated early, uh, a few minutes, uh, a few seconds ago, it just made me feel really good to hear the prophecies that came forth. Um, but what we're going to talk about, the title of my message is, What Did He Say? Yeah. What Did He Say? That's the title. I kind of went back and forth between uh, what did he say and what is he saying? But if you... Bring back to your remembrance or think about what did he say. Whatever he said, he's still saying it. Amen? Amen. So what did he say? And I just want to encourage you uh, as you're listening to the word, not just now, but no matter who's speaking or why you're studying the word, even in your own devotional time. But I just want to encourage you this morning to stay tuned and listen on the inside, right? Uh, As you're listening with your natural ears, you can listen on the inside as you're hearing the word of God. Because what he does oftentimes while you're hearing it, he confirms it. Amen. He confirms it, and what he'll do is he'll speak to you, he'll speak to me as you're listening on the inside concerning applying the word to whatever you may be at in your life right now. I believe that. I've experienced that, and I know I'm not the only one. So I just wanted to give those encouraging, uh, exhort you this morning in reference to that. Listen, listen in here. Uh, listen to in the core of your being, because he is, say he is. He is speaking. He's always speaking. And so I also want to encourage you uh, to stop saying, I can't hear him. Stop saying, I have trouble hearing him. That is not true if you are born again. You can hear him. Oftentimes there's interferences or things that get in the way or maybe because we're not have renewed our mind with the word of God or, or, or um, we're, our, we're lining our mind up more so with our body instead of our mind with our spirit that knows all things. Because he speaks to us through our spirit to our mind. Amen. So you, child of God, hear the voice of God. And we are going to confirm that through the scriptures this morning. So um, as I say sometime, as you feel yourself because you've had a busy weekend Uh, getting sleepy or tired, it won't offend me if you stand up in the back. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to try to uh, minister like uh, Pastor T, not Youth Pastor T, because Youth Pastor T get a little crazy. So if I slip into Youth Pastor T sometime, I get my youth to give a little amen corner here. All right? All right. So sometimes it could be difficult to know God for ourselves or know for ourselves, I'm sorry, it's difficult to know for ourselves what he said without renewing our minds with the word of God. And so one of my favorite scriptures, of course, and it's our youth scriptures, is in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'll be reading primarily all of the scriptures I'll be sharing this morning is from the um, New King James Version. So Romans chapter 12, verse 2, if you can uh, turn to that, and we have that here I'm looking down because, Bert, I'm not allowed to go on the floor. I'm used to ministering on the floor when I'm talking to the youth. So that's, that's out, right? Yeah, it's out. Okay. <laughs> if I walk down, honey, make sure I go back up. <laughs> I'll walk down and, when I'm talking to the youth. So Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren or sistren, 
By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. You present your bodies. You can also say our five physical senses. And do not be conformed to this world, this standard and what the world does, says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. You prove it. As you, as I, renew our minds that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And as I've often said concerning this particular scripture, that if there is a good, most likely there's a... Y'all tracking with me. Y'all ate your Cheerios this morning. If there is an acceptable, there is an unacceptable. If there is a perfect, there is an imperfect. None of those imperfect, unacceptable, and bad is from God. It's just what we experience as a result of not renewing our minds and not just renewing our minds, but being obedient to what we know to do. Right. Come on now. So we are perfect within ourselves. Your spirit is perfect. There's nothing that needs to be done. You're complete in him. But we have a mind that needs to be renewed and a body that needs to be kept under. That's right. Come on. What is the title? What did he say? Or what is he saying? And most of this message is going to be personal for me, for you. Okay? So we have life. We have, we have the life of the Son of God right now. Yes. We are in him and he is in us. Look at 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. We are currently dwelling in Christ Jesus. We're not waiting to be in union with him. We are currently in union with him. 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 9, it says, if we, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. And if you notice, as I'm reading these scriptures, and as we are reading these scriptures, how many times, at least six times, uh, he uses the word has. At least five or six times, he uses the word have. He's talking about what we have right now. We're not waiting for any of this. We have it now. Verse number 10. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has um, does not believe God has made him a liar. How have we made or how do you make him a liar? Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given his son. In other words, God is not a liar. It's just that we make it out to be that way when we don't believe that he has sent his son. And his son, through the spirit, dwells in us, in us, in him. Verse 11. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. These are key verses. He who has the son has life. Say, I have life. Right now, you're walking with him and he's in you. Right now, you are currently in eternity. When your body, when your spirit leaves your body, there's nothing that's going to change about you. I don't go seeking these stories, but it is interesting to hear the stories of people who have went to heaven and came back. And they've encountered Jesus. And oftentimes you hear their testimony, whether they're talking to Jesus or someone else, that when they communicate with him or that person, that they don't open their mouth, but they know on the inside right. what to do without speaking out of their mouth. Right. Guess what? You have that same witness right now. Amen. You may not hear an audible voice. You may not hear some loud sound, but you are connected. You are in union with him. 
And I'm going to show you in Scripture that this is true right now. You'll know what to do without hearing some big sound. As a matter of fact, that's one of the main ways he's going to speak to us is in here, through that witness right. on the inside of us. Verse number 12. He who has a son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know, not guess, wonder, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of God. Stay with me. Now, this is the confidence you're not even guessing about this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions or the requests that we ask of him. So don't get this confused. It's like this is not something like we're asking that we already do have, which is healing or our needs being met or peace or sleep at night, all these things. We have these things already in Christ Jesus. But sometimes there's things that we don't know concerning the future. That's why the word of God tells us to acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct he will guide our path. Amen. When um, uh, I, I met my beautiful wife, I was working at an amusement park, and she come walking up. And I was like, Adam, you remember when, <laughs> when the Lord took Adam's rib and made Eve? Adam said, whoa, man, whoa, man. And so when, when she come walking, I go, whoa, man, whoa, man, whoa, T, slow your road. <laughs> so when I met her, you know, we talked and everything, but I was born again at the time, and she, and she was not, and we, it just, it didn't work out. Um, we drifted apart, and we broke up. We didn't fought, we didn't have fight or nothing, we just, we, we broke up. I'm sharing this with you because it connects with this scripture and another scripture also. And so through the course of time, of course, I'm at church, um, involved in church, and I end up, you know, the, well, some of the church folks end up putting, hooking me and this other young lady. I, I agreed to it too, though. Anyway, we, 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 I hooked up with another young lady at the church. That's you know, my girlfriend, you know, nice young lady. Okay. And so I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to shorten this up and not get in trouble with my wife. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Anyway, and so, so here I was dating her. Well, I got interest. Uh, my wife and I went to Rainbow Bible uh, Training Center. I got interested in that school. Um, so I decided to go up there. They had what they call a get acquainted with Rhema, right? And so I went up there, and on that Friday, they had us to pray concerning, you know, uh, attending the school and just things, working things out to go or whatever. So I began to pray, and I actually prayed in tongues uh, concerning that. And all I got on the inside is um, you're not going now and to break up with, and I heard that young lady's name. I didn't hear an audible voice. I just heard in here as I was praying. You're not going now and break up with so-and-so. And it was a, it was a witness. It was a relief, release. So I came back to Florida, and it wasn't what I wanted to hear, but that's what he spoke. Yeah, yeah. And it was difficult, so that's what I did. I broke up with her, and just so you know, uh, she ended up marrying an amazing uh, man that I, young man that I knew. We grew up playing sports together, and they have a beautiful family. But anyway, I broke up with her. My mom asked me, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm not going now. So I continued doing Romans 12, 1 and 2, going after Jesus putting him first. Right. Well, in the course of time, Stacy, and some of you know her testimony, she ended up coming to that church, getting born again. Wow. We got engaged, and the next year we were at Ramah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that happened simply because, for a few reasons, well, I acknowledge him. He gave me the direction. It wasn't the direction I wanted to hear at the time. I had the choice yes. Yes. That's good. to not be obedient to what he said. Come on. That's right. It was my will. He didn't force me to. And as a result of that, then a year later, then I didn't have a clue that that was going to happen. A year later, we're back at the school together. Right? Right. So look at this right here, uh, verse number 15. It says, and we know that he, uh, he hears us and whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions or the requests that we ask of him. In James chapter um, 4, we're not going to go there in, uh, right now for sake of time, but in James chapter 4, it says that he that knoweth to do right and doeth it not to him or her, it is sin. Well, I, I got the direction in reference to that. Now, I, it's no need to ask anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's time for me to be obedient That's right. because he gave me guidance. Yes, sir. And for me not to do that would be sin. I'm not a sinner, but I'll be, out of, I'll be in disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's no condemnation to any of you, to me or anybody, if you're walking in in sin through disobedience because you have the time to correct it. It's your choice. It's your will. So don't beat yourself up. Just do what you know to do. Okay? I read this in Jim Richards' book, and as, as we, we can turn to John chapter 2, John chapter 2. In Jim Richards' book, Leadership That uh, Builds People, he made this statement, and I, I love it. He said that um, um, future blessings are contingent on present obedience. Ooh. Our future blessings are, and I say, dependent on present obedience. In other words, we're already blessed. And this is me adding this part. Because in Ephesians chapter 1, and I think verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, not going to, who hath blessed us, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're not waiting to be blessed. You, if you're born again, are already blessed with your blessed self. But just because we're already blessed doesn't mean we automatically experience the blessings. You're already blessed. But it doesn't mean we already we experience the blessings. It takes obedience and willingness on our part. John chapter 2. Let's start with verse number 1. Uh, on the third day, we're going to be covering a lot of scriptures this morning, so hang with me, okay? On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples, pay attention to that. And his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, oh, Lord, they ran out of wine. Jesus. The mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mama said to the servants, she said it to Jesus. He didn't give the response that she was expecting. She turns to the servants. Whatever he tells you, do it. Notice that she said it to the servants and not the disciples. There's a reason for that. Stay with me. Verse number six. Now there were six. Uh, set their six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. A lot of water. Jesus said to the servants, not his disciples, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8, and he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast and they took it. Notice what Jesus did not say. Now, I say this often because it's good to sort of look at what he did not say. Or notice what Jesus did not do. And I'm going to read it this way. 
real quick, seven and eight. Fill the water pots with water. Draw some water out now and take it to the master of the feast. He didn't say it that way. This is how he said it. Fill the water pots with water. Wait it. Just gave them step number one. See, sometimes we're waiting for step two and three and four and five when we haven't did one. And we say, Lord, I want you to speak to me concerning this thing, but we haven't did step number one. We did step number one and two, and we're waiting for step number four and five. We did step number one, two, three, and four, and haven't did five, and we're waiting for six. Walk with Jesus one step at a time. You say, I don't know what he's telling me to do. Find out and do that. He said, fill the water pots with water, and he paused and waited for them to do step one. And they filled them up to the brim. Then he said, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Verse 9. When the master of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. Because them rascals were standing there wide-eyed and cock-eyed, wondering, oh, Lord, we just gave the master of the servants some water. And we could be in trouble. So they knew what they gave him. But as they watched, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, listen, man, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. Mm. And when the guests have well drunk and they're feeling good, then he sets out the three or four dollar wine from Walmart. <laughs> You have kept the good wine until now. This is the beginning, verse number 11. This is the beginning of the signs that Jesus did in, in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed. Jesus could not have manifested his glory if the servants weren't obedient. To do step one, and then after step one, step two. Now, I had you to pay attention because Jesus and the disciples were invited to the feast. Jesus' mama didn't say to the disciples, whatever he says, do it. Jesus didn't say to the disciples, fill the water pots with water and take it to the master of the feast. I forgot what his name is. But they were watching all this the whole time. And as a result of seeing that, the end of verse number 11, it says, and his disciples believed in him. They believed not only in the miracle, but they believed in the process. So when you're obedient to him, it encourages you to believe in the future. When you're obedient now, it helps you to be obedient and believe. As you observe him moving in your life and you listen to him and do what he say or do what he say. Amen? Amen. In Mark chapter 3, if you turn there, Mark chapter 3, that's why it's so important that we take one step at a time. Just one step at a time. Don't rush it. As long as we're listening to him and acknowledging him, we're trusting him, he's got it. I said, he's got it. Yes, sir. And it may not be or how we think it's going to turn out. And just because it worked that way for somebody else doesn't mean it's going to automatically work that way for you. But he has his best and perfect for you. Amen. Verse uh, chapter 3, this is a busy day for Jesus. Uh, in chapter 3, in verse number 1, it talks about, you know, he entered the synagogue and and uh, they watched him, and, and he prayed for a man that had a withered hand. And we're not going to go through all those verses, but actually one, verses 1 through 20 
Jesus is doing quite a bit of things. Um, he cast out demons, I think, in verse number 9. Uh, he healed many people. Uh, in verse number uh, 14, he appointed his disciples. It was a busy, busy day for Jesus. And his family was hearing about this. Look at verse number 20. Then the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. Verse number 21. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him. For they said, he is out of his plumb mind. What is he doing? All this Jesus stuff. Some of you have experienced that from your own family. What are you doing? Why are you all into this Jesus? What's the meaning of this? Does it take all that? And these are the closest ones to him. His mother... His brothers, and one translation says his sisters also. So they set out to lay hold of him. They leave their location to head to Jesus' location because they need to lay hold of him. <laughs> Verse number 31. Then his brothers and his mother came standing outside and sent to him, calling him. And the multitude was sitting around Jesus, and they said to Jesus, look. Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But Jesus answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around at everybody that was there in a circle. Those who sat about him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For he, for whosoever, verse 35 does the will of God is my brother and my mother and my sister. So he's not saying this to be disrespectful to his mom, especially, or disrespectful to his brothers, but you have to look at this thing spiritually. If you study it out, he's not talking about um, who's my mother and my brother and my sister blood-wise. It's those 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 mother and that brother and that sister spiritualize because he's relating to his father here. Right. So those that do the will of God is his mother, his brother, his sister. It's the, it's the spiritual aspect that's most important, not your blood relative, Come on now. not your cousin. No man, no woman should stop you from doing Come on. what he said. That's right. Otherwise, he wouldn't say to do it. That's right. And this is so, so very important because the ones that's closest to us, co-workers, friends, family, can cause us to miss or get off track from what he's said to do or what he's saying to do. Yes, sir. That's why we, it's so very important, once again, going back to Romans 12, 1 and 2, to not just renew our minds with this word of God, but spend time and being quiet with him and doing this word of God, acting it out. Because the closest ones to you sometimes can get you off track That's right. and get you flustered and get you second guessing what he said. Come on now, preacher. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Uh, since Jesus, uh, since Jesus is calling God his father, we we can call God our father also. And, and we confirm that right here in John chapter 16. As Jesus relates to the Father, this is how we should relate to him also. Because as he is, so are we right now in this world. But oftentimes we don't see ourselves that way because, uh, and I'm saying we, including myself, if you're not mindful because 
as we renew our mind with the word of God, we don't look at ourselves as our completeness in him being perfect with our spirit and matching our spirit up with our renewed mind. But instead, we're matching our unrenewed mind up with our physical body or our five physical senses. And that's not how we walk down here. We walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit is to be mindful of who is on the inside of you and who you are in him, our true identity. And we move and go about our daily life, our daily day, being God inside minded. Not kicking to the curb our physical senses. We need those. You need to cross the street sometimes. So you need to see what's coming. But we're not dominated by these things. Look at, uh, I said chapter 15 and verse number 13. Verse number 13, it says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide. Remember it talked about the guide? He will guide you into all truth. When I was in transportation years ago, sometimes I used to act as a tour guide. But I didn't grab the people by the collar and say, listen, you follow me, and I'm going to show you Disney World and Universal Studios, and you better not try to get away from me. <laughs> no, they had the choice to not follow me as their guide Man. and walk off. That didn't mean I'm still stop being a guide, right? right? And that's how the Holy Spirit is. Right, you can walk away and stop listening to him. That doesn't mean he stops speaking to you. Because he never leaves you, nor forsakes you. He's always wanting to guide you, but sometimes we just drift over here listening to what everybody else is saying and paying attention to what everybody else is saying instead of what's taking place to the guide on the inside of us. And what is he saying to you right now? For he will, this is what Jesus is saying right now. At the time, the Holy Spirit had not come when he's talking, but he's saying what is going to take place, not just with his disciples, but right now in this day and age where he's seated at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit's already here. He will guide you into all truth, but he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. That's right. Similar to how he led me when I prayed concerning going to Raymond. Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it unto you. He's not withholding. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Remember, Jesus said, whoever does the will of God is my mother, my father, my brother. He's saying right here, whatever the Father says. His father is your father. Right. And no, I ask questions sometimes, and, and, and I even I notice when, I, well, I don't notice, but sometimes when someone's up speaking, they ask a question for, particip for participation. I'm getting ready to ask a question. I'm going to ask you to participate. Amen. Okay? When I, when I ask you to raise your hand, I, I want you to participate, okay? Help me out. Don't, not yet, Hank. <laughs> I love Hank. My mic? Go, Hank. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? All right. Hank, Hank is the biggest, when he comes to help out with the youth, he's the biggest youth that we have on Wednesday night. He's awesome. But, so how many, listen to this, and I'll ask for a show of hands. How many um, have like heard something on the inside or like maybe it seems like, man, I seem, seems like I should go over here or seems like I should call this person. Yeah. It seems like I should text this person yeah. or, or you just have a witness on the inside and then later on, I mean, you do it. You follow that witness, right? You don't really know, but you just have a prompting on the inside and you end up doing it and then later on you realize, wow. That was the Holy Spirit talking. That's right. Raise your hand. I would say that's over half the people that are here. And it's probably more because some didn't participate. 
<laughs> right? But it's over half the people that are here that, that have experienced that. You didn't hear an audible voice. You just had a tug, a witness, something that just seemed good on the inside of you. That's how he primarily leads us. Look at Acts chapter 15 in verse number, find it first. Acts 15, let's look at, well, actually, verse number one. I'm going to bounce around, um, Miss Darcy, so if, if it's not up here, don't blame it on Miss Darcy. It's T's fault. Verse number one, Acts 15, it talks about, and certain men came down from Judea and talked to brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. I heard somebody say, ouch. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small uh, dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go to Jerusalem to the apostles uh, and elders about this question. So I'm just going to kind of speed this up. Um, so they were talking in reference to the Gentiles that unless they be circumcised and keep the law of Moses, you know, it, it cannot be saved, which is not true. So they had, they sent to say, we're going to send the apostles to Jerusalem. So they get to Jerusalem. They're talking about this through verses, uh, I don't know, 3 through 13. And Jesus' brother James speaks up. And, uh, and finally, uh, after everyone else talked, he speaks up, and they decide to go with his suggestion also, which is in verse number 22. Or let's, yeah. Yeah, 22. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was named Barsabbas and Silas. Pay attention to Silas. As we read this, pay attention, silence. Leading men of the brethren. And so they sent a letter to the, uh, with these guys to go to, to, uh, to Athens, I mean to Antioch. Look at verse number 25. It seemed good. They didn't say the Holy Spirit spoke to them. It just seemed good. To us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. This is what they're writing in the letter. Even Jesus, I believe in Matthew uh, and also in Luke, Jesus used that term also, seem good, in reference to the Father doing things because Jesus, he didn't know everything when he was down here. He was like us. He was showing us how to do it as Jesus of Nazareth. So he was showing us how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And, and to walk down here on this earth. Look at verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these things. That's the second time I think that they've used it. Look at verse number 33. And after they had stayed there for a time, they, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. In other words, okay, they, they read the letter, they got the instruction, and they were sent back. They were sent back. They were sent back by the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. It did not say the Holy Spirit yelled at him, spoke to him. It just seemed good to just chill out right there. Don't, don't, don't go. Don't leave. Hang tight. Don't go with the brother. Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Then, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas was determined, say determined. determined. He was determined to take his cousin. Come on, cuz. 
Let's go back. Follow me. And they were actually cousins. I think in Colossians chapter 4, it talks about how Barnabas and Mark was, were cousins. Verse number 37, and Barnabas determined to take with them John, Mark, called Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work of the ministry. In other words, they were in the middle of the work of the ministry and Mark left them hanging. Walked out on them. And Paul's like, no, no, mm -mm, no, he shouldn't come. He should not come. And they got into a big argument. Verse 39. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark, his cousin, cuz, and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria, Cilicia, and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. What if Silas would not have listened to the scene good in verse number 34? Someone say, well, why didn't the Holy Spirit just tell him, listen, Paul and Barnabas are about to get into a big argument. Hang tight. I don't know. You ask him. <laughs> but the majority of the people that raise their hand here have experienced what Silas experienced. And that's a continual way that he leads us through that inward witness here on the inside. Yes. Yes. But it can be cluttered and we can miss it. When we have so much going on in our life, Ooh, and it just distorts, yes. it's not, the, the, the word is clear, right. the direction is clear, the guidance is clear, but it's being distorted through interference out here. Yes. Come on. He wants to guide. He wants to lead. One of the things, and oftentimes the Holy Spirit will use examples from things that you've experienced in your life to relate to spiritual things. He'll take all those things to, to work it. And when I was in law enforcement, and I've shared this before, and I had the earpiece, I would hear what's going on out in, inside the earpiece. And say, for instance, if I'm in a bar fight or something like that, breaking up a fight or at a block party, and there's noise and people yelling and other things are happening, it was so important to pay attention to what was going on in here because this could save my life. So while I'm on the ground, and I was one time, he's on the ground breaking up a fight, and things are going on, dispatcher is giving instructions in here. Things are, are going to go on in your life where it's going to seem like it's overwhelming. It's too much that you can't hear him, but you can. And he's made a way for that. But we have to tune in. We have to allow ourselves to get quiet enough on the inside to hear what he's saying. Yes, yes, yes. Even if you have to separate yourself from him, her, or them. Because you need to get direction. You need to get guidance from the guide. He's not withholding and he never will withhold. He never will withhold. So, I mean, not to kick um, Barnabas to the curb because, you know, uh, uh, even you, he mentioned in verse number 30, 39, I think it was, or 30, verse 40, how Paul and Silas, they were commended by the brethren by wisdom. They were commended by them, but it doesn't say anything about Barnabas and Mark being commended. But it doesn't mean that they did not have any more purpose for the kingdom. It was just for that moment that that took place. And wisdom commended those two. Because later on in scripture, it talks about Barnabas. As a matter of fact, at the end of Paul's life, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 
when he's talking about he's ran a good race and he's fought fight and now there's laid up for him a crown and all these type of things. And he's talking to Timothy. He says to Timothy, doing that conversation, doing that letter, hey, make sure you bring Mark with you. Because he is useful for me in the ministry. The same Mark that left him hanging, now he's asking for him. And this is to encourage some of you that maybe you were, have been unfaithful in the past. It's not too late. You're still useful for the ministry, for the kingdom. But it's our choice to get back on track, to get off the bench and get in the game. Paul said that Mark now is useful for me. I need him. Mark, Timothy, please bring him. That's awesome. In Proverbs chapter 25, I think it says, confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. That's <laughs> Boy, look at him. If you got a broken tooth, that's bad enough. But then if your foot's out of joint, that's even worse. You know, T's translation, I imagine all type of stuff like eating a nice, nice piece of rib and my tooth is broke. And I can't enjoy it. Yeah. And I get so mad that I throw the rib down and get up and try to walk away from the table, but I can't walk away because my foot's out of joint. <laughs> so now I'm laying there on the floor smelling those good ribs that I can't eat and I can't get away from them because my foot's out of joint. <laughs> Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. Oh. Don't be a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. <laughs> be faithful. Be dependable. Yeah. Be trustworthy. Come on now. Even if you, and I have too, I've missed it. I've been disobedient. I've been unfaithful. But God doesn't see us according to our unfaithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. He sees us according to who he's created us to be Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. Right. Right. And if we see ourselves that way, we'll stop beating ourselves up and just get back into the game. Right. Right. That's so important. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. See you back there. That's my cue. I'm almost done, y'all. Praise the Lord. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We've heard this scripture before. Philippians chapter 2, and uh, I believe it's verse number 13. Yeah. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 13. No, it's not. What is it? Yeah, for God is at work, for, for it is God who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. In other words, right now, currently, you as a child of God, he's working in you, not just to will, but his grace and ability to do of his good pleasure. That's right, that's right. So we do not have an excuse not to do what he says, because he's working it in us on the inside. And not only is he working us, but he's gracing us to walk it out because you're going to need it. When he speaks to you, you're going to be tempted. Not by him, by circumstances to draw back. But he's currently working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Tap into his will. Tap into his ability. That's being currently worked on the inside of you, on the inside of me. The uh, last scripture that I wanted to share with you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, at verse number 15, it says... Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know, talk to Christians, that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one body. 
He who is joined to the Lord is one mind. No. He who is joined or she who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought Hallelujah. with the price. Yeah. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit that belongs to him. Hallelujah. Your spirit, not just your spirit, but your body belongs to him. And we glorify him in our spirit and in our body when we do what he says to do. It gives glory to him. Just like the servants gave glory to him by doing step one. And then doing step two with their bodies. His spirit, our spirit, is in union with his spirit. But our bodies are not. It says our spirit and our bodies belong to him, which are God's. But he don't dwell in our physical body. He dwells in our spirit. The mind can't comprehend that to a degree. But you're able to believe that in the core of your being. You're able to believe that. You are a spirit. As we know, and you have a soul, you live in a body. So I encourage you, as I encourage myself, to take this word on a daily basis, not to prove yourself to the Lord in reference to, oh, I read this many scriptures today, but Lord, show me through your word who I am in you and who you are in me. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for bringing this back to my remembrance so that I can do what you say or what you're saying to me because he does not want us to walk outside of what he said. And he's not keeping it back from you or me. I have, you have the ability, as was prophesied, to hear the voice of the Lord. And he's speaking. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you that your word is true. And, and uh, Holy Spirit, as you spoke to the hearts you confirm with people's spirit, uh, spirit this morning. I just thank you for the grace, do you? The ability, because some of us have a choice. Some of us have a choice to take that step that you spoke to us, whether it was this morning, a week or so ago, months ago, 10, 15 years ago. But your word says you've given us the strength and the ability to carry out what you've placed on the inside of us. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, that as we go, we'll know. As we step, you will reveal and confirm your purpose. Not everyone, mostly everyone, my friends, is not called to the fivefold ministry. But everyone's called to ministry. Right. Yes. But it's hard to minister when you don't allow him to minister to you. That's right. you. Can't give. We can't give what we don't have or what we're not experiencing. Right. But it's available. Amen? Amen. So maybe you're here this morning or possibly watching online and you say, well, I don't, I don't get with any of this because I don't even know this Jesus. And it will be wrong for me to not give you an opportunity to know him, to experience him, to lay hold of him 
to become one with him and he becomes one with you through accepting him as Lord. All you have to do, as the word of God says, is call on the name of the Lord. Believe in your heart. Confess him as Lord. And you shall, not maybe, be saved. So whether you're watching here online or you're, wa uh, you're watching online or you're here physically, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for accepting me. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead for my justification, for my relationship with the Father. I choose you as my Lord. Thank you for accepting me. Hallelujah. As your son, as your daughter. Or maybe you're here this morning and, and uh, you've kind of gotten off track. I just believe, God, that you'll get back on track. Get back into the game. Get back on the bench. Uh, get, get off the bench and get, on, get into the game. All it is is a decision. My father-in-law often says, whom I love so much, he says, you know, most of the time, things are not as difficult as we make them. But we just need to go towards it and start doing it and we'll realize, man, this wasn't as hard as I thought. And that is true. Because when we're yoked up with him, it is easy. His burden light. Hallelujah. So as we prepare to leave this morning, I'm just going to ask you to stand if you want to. And um, always we want to make available our amazing prayer ministers. So they're here this morning and uh, to agree with you, speak the word over you, to possibly give material if needed. So if you're wanting to them to minister with you, for you, please don't leave without giving yourself that opportunity. These are amazing people here. Father, we thank you right now for your word once again, and we give you praise and glory. We go forth in boldness, confidence, knowing that you are with us. You never leave us, forsake us, and we can not only be hearers of your word, but doers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are dismissed.